Welcome to the Allison Loves Math podcast. I am super excited to introduce today's guest, Audrey Codner Gibson. Now, Audrey has taught secondary mathematics for 19 years in and around Baltimore, and recently she started her own online tutoring business with a focus on algebra, like all levels of algebra from, from sixth grade pre-algebra all the way up to college algebra. So she's also a former basketball player, professional basketball player throughout Europe, Sweden and Iceland, and a big five Hall of Fame inductee. She's the co-author of the upcoming book, Athletes to Entrepreneur, and she's the developer of a support program for student athletes and their parents um, that goes you know, throughout the recruiting process while also providing mental health connections through their college careers. So welcome, Audrey. I am so super excited to have you here today to talk about math tutoring and how to find a right math tutor. Well, thank you so much, Elsa. It's so great to be here with you. Love and appreciation from Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just jump right in to math tutoring. You're a math tutor. Let's start off by just telling us a little bit about what you do. Um, sorry. <laughs> just where am I <laughs> coming from? <laughs> let me, sorry, let me, let me. I swear it's because I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning. Okay, <laughs> let me rephrase that. So let's start off by talking a little bit about what you do. Tell us about your tutoring business, how you got into it, um, and why you do it. Sure. So for the past 19 years, I was a classroom teacher throughout basically Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and also Anne Arundel County. So stayed in here in Maryland. And I noticed that last year before COVID that that was going to be my last year in the classroom. I just had to make that transition. It's not the kids. I love the kids, but I just got tired of the foolishness. So <laughs> I just wanted to do some research on, okay, what can I do that I can continue to teach, but not be in this toxic arena? So I saw online tutoring and I did some research on it, met up with a few people, and then I'm like, this is what I wanted to do. So of course I sampled it out a little bit, um, November, and I was like, okay, this is what I can do. And then bam, COVID hit. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to continue. But I already told my principal that I wasn't going to return, but I was going to continue, I'm going to still pull forth my whole effort. And um, while I was doing that, kind of developing the business plan and so forth. So it gave me time to basically get my feet wet. And it wasn't until about August, this past August, that I really went for whole hog. This is it. Definitely no turning back. Go ahead and take the leap of faith. And I am so glad I did that. Um, I am able to basically regain my love of teaching again. I know, I know my teachers are out there, they're in the trenches, they're doing everything. And it's been really a huge transition has been very hard for them. But I'm really glad that I did take that leap of faith, because now I'm able to tutor more students, not just the students in my class, but mm -hmm. mostly students from all over. I have students in California, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, um, a bunch in Maryland and one in Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, that is so cool. Right. And oh. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so just making that whole transition and just developing and I decided to name it after myself, ACG, uh, math tutoring. So a lot of people say, does the A mean algebra, the C mean calculus, and the G means geometry? I'm like, that's cute. Wasn't thinking about that. But no, that's my initials. <laughs> And um, from there on in, it's been growing. It really has been growing. And I'm so appreciative of all the parents and all the kids that have really entrusted me to basically expand their knowledge and their love for math. Yes, yes. I, I couldn't agree more. I think that tutoring is one of the most rewarding careers you can have. So before I was a teacher, I was a math tutor. I tutored everything under the sun from you know high school math through all levels of like undergrad math I did like SAT and ACT prep and and honestly it was so much fun and it was so rewarding and it wasn't exhausting you know in in the way that that teaching can be because teaching is very rewarding also but you know you just you get that one-on-one -on -one Yes. interaction with students you get to know them more personally and and help them more you know and 
it's just the progress that you can see with students when you work one-on-one -on -one with them is amazing you know yes yes and, and you can um, see their confidence just yes grow yes. and like from the first time they met you you know they're resistant because there is almost like a stigma when it comes to tutoring like yes. we as human beings we don't want to ask for help like mm -hmm. we will do anything and anything possible to not to look weak and that i don't know if that's a social thing or if it's just just how our nature natural instincts i have no idea but right, right. it's almost like when you see a kid they first come and they're like all quiet and then all of a sudden they start seeing how they're progressing because mm -hmm. now they're starting to volunteer more in class never mm -hmm. did that before or now they see themselves like guys no you're not supposed to do it like that do this and now they're instructing their friends and now their confidence level is soaring and now they're starting to make connections and that's one of the reasons why i kind of made my little slogan is like building confidence and making connections because that's exactly what i want my students to do you know yes. just to feel that you can do math yes everyone can do math like if yes. i can if i can teach math <laughs> anybody can learn math <laughs> like there's there's hands down because i struggled when i was a kid yeah completely yeah. i couldn't go to my mother my mother was like nope go to your father this is not me this is not my world and my dad was doing perfectly fine until algebra kicked in and then when algebra kicked in there was numbers and letters and he was like what is this and yeah that's when life just kind of turned around so it's really kind of building their confidence and have that love for math and just seeing that if i want to say that pivot like yeah. seeing that pivot and you can actually see them excited like what else are we going to learn can you teach me something that no one else knows i'm like sure <laughs> <laughs> but let me put it in connection with your currently working so you're not going to be way far ahead and then you get confused and they're like oh okay Great. So it's it's really fun. I really do appreciate it. I love it. So let's talk about how to find the right math tutor for your child. And I think we sort of touched on what probably both of us think is maybe the most important or one of the most important characteristics, which is, you know, getting the student to love math and have, build their confidence in math, you know, and have just approach it with a different attitude. Right. But would you say that's probably right. one of one of the more important things? Yes. And in order for you to do that is as a tutor, you have to know how to build a relationship because mm -hmm. that's basically what you're doing. We have to as tutors, we have to change that mindset, especially if we were former teachers. We're so used to like, OK, I got to do my lesson plans, got to turn it in, got to assess, got to plan, assess plans, get. And it's just too much. When you're a tutor, it's completely different you are like the filler okay so like you are like okay this is what this child needs and that's what i'm getting so i'm going to be the filler to help that child be able to make that advancement be able to make those changes in his classroom so you'll have tutors that know the content like we've talked about before they know the content inside and out yeah. but if you don't know how to translate that to a child you're wasting your time because now the child's frustrated, confidence level is gone, don't know how to progress. And then all of a sudden you just pile on and now you're just feeding that I hate math syndrome <laughs> into that yeah. child. And then it's another cycle that we have to break later on. Yes. So it really is when you're a tutor and the way to find a good tutor is first thing, make sure like it's great that now we have these Zoom calls. Like when you find somebody, take that initiative, take a look, look at their website, see if they have any content. Um, it doesn't even matter if they're brand spanking new or if they've been doing it for a while. As long as they can build that relationship with your child, that's going to be the key thing. Yes. And ask questions. Um, but have a Zoom call and make sure you have a Zoom call with you and your child mm -hmm. and the tutor. Because there's going to be things as a parent that you know, but there's some things that the kids know. So there's something like, oh, I know my child struggles with blah, 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 blah. But then the kid's like, but I also struggle with this. And there's so many times the parent was like, I never knew that. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's why we have these calls with all three of you here. 
Um, right. Regardless of how young or how old the child is, really have the child involved into the calls as well. Right. So definite relationship builder. That's huge. And I think too, from that first call, if your child is there, you get a sense of whether or not your kid will connect with that tutor, exactly. you know, because they might say everything and then they'll say, oh, everything's fine. Everything's good. But you can just sort of tell that like, they're not excited, you know, yeah. as opposed to like, oh yeah, I could definitely, you know, work with this person. When do I get to meet with them next? And you're like, okay, you know, you know, that's the right, right personality for your kid. You know, you could have two perfectly, you know, nice and, and um, confidence building, you know, positive tutors, right. But just slightly different personalities and your kid just might connect more to one than the other. And, you know, trust your gut when you see, you know, your, your kid's reaction, I think. Exactly. And the other thing, don't be sneaky. Okay, as a parent, we, we love you, but I always ask, does your child know that you're doing this? And the, most <laughs> of the time, some of the parents are like, no. And I'm like, no, we, we can't do this. Your child needs to know why you're doing this. Because, yeah, they're going to be like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is going to take too much time away from my video game and blah, blah, blah. But don't do it sneaking because all of a sudden when the, the client or when the tutor is meeting the child for the first time, it's going to be awkward. I had that once. I will admit to that. And I will never do that again, <laughs> that the child came on crying for like 20 minutes, oh, no. crying hysterically. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, mom's like, I don't know why she's crying. Did it? But my whole thing is the child didn't know because she thought she was dumb because she's getting a tutor and no one else is getting a tutor. So all, every, all her friends are gonna know she's getting a tutor. And I had to convince her saying, look, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to make you feel any kind of encompassing whatsoever. I'm just here to support you. You tell me what you need and I'm willing to support. If you don't want me to, do, of course, I didn't charge on that one because I'm like, she's crying half the time because <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't do it. Like in my soul, I'm like, I can't do this to this person. But we finally got ourselves together. And then, of course, like a lot of her, her answers were yes and no. And I'm like, do you understand this? She's like, no. I'm like, all right, what part? This part. Okay. And then I break it down. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that patience, man. The patience of Job sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> but at the same, but you break it down. And then at the end of every session, no matter how long I've had the kids, I always ask, how do you feel? Like, what is it? Like, what could I've done different? How do you feel? And a lot of them are like, no, this was really good. Like, I understand it. And the same young lady that was crying hysterically the first time. The second time she was like, no, not even the second time. At the end of that first time, she went to her mom. I need her like, because I have a test on Tuesday. So I need her on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, good. So she, you, you feel good. She's like, yeah, I, I understand you more than I understand my own teacher. And I'm like, that's good, but don't disregard your teacher. So sometimes I have to say that. Because a lot of them are like, well, Miss Audrey said, I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't try to get me through the mud. Um, but for the most part, it is that relationship. And just make sure the kids know that what you're doing. So they're not shocked yes. when this happens. <laughs> <laughs> I just that reminds me of a story. Like, so and this was so long ago now, but I will never forget it. But I remember I showed up uh, to two a high school student it, it must have been like algebra two or something like that um and and he did not want to be tutored and he refused to talk to me he just sat at the table <laughs> and I was like okay like so it was clearly like dad signed up for a tutor and he wanted nothing of it he was failing his class um and and so I was like okay well you know your dad's paying me to be here I don't know what you don't like so I just sort of did some of the math, you know, and just, and he didn't say a single thing throughout the whole lesson. And I talked to his dad afterwards. I was like, I don't, I don't think I should be coming back. Right. Um, but you know, and the dad was just adamant. He's just sort of like, he's going to be like this with any tutor ever. So just come back the next time. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> this is the weirdest <laughs> thing ever. Um, but after a few lessons, he finally started talking. And as it turned out, he thought his dad hated him and was just getting a tutor to be mean to him oh. and make him miserable. And it turned out there was just this whole 
dysfunctional relationship between like the father and the son. And, and it was the cool thing about that story actually was that he was actually just sabotaging his math class to piss his dad off. And when I convinced him to actually try on his test and he got an A on the test and his dad was so happy and he got him like concert tickets and stuff. And he realized, oh, my dad doesn't actually hate me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so, Kids. <laughs> so I guess, I mean, I, sorry, random story. I'm not sure exactly what the, the, the point or the, the moral of it is, except that maybe, you know, I know sometimes, sometimes parent relationships can get in the way of student success with math, you know, mm. and sometimes it's, it gets messy, right? Because a lot of oh, times yeah. it isn't just the math itself, um, you know, and in this case, sort of picking that battle, fighting your kid, his kid on that and getting a math tutor anyways, you know, and finding someone who could actually break through and right. figure out what the problem was and convince him to actually try, you know, it wasn't actually teaching the material as it turned out. It was just figuring out what was going on in his head and convincing him to try, Right. you know, that right. made the difference. So, you know, yeah. I mean, Especially that's... I think if, if things are complicated like that, right. Again, that goes back to the, the connection and finding someone who can, who your child can have an honest conversation with, you know, even if it's a few lessons in, you know, I think is, can be key. Yes. Because, and also there's another, not even just a simple line or a segment from father to son or mother to daughter or whatever. There's another part. There's a triangle here when it comes to the son and daughter, the child, the parent and the teacher. Like I've had some where some teachers are very welcoming, like, yes, you're getting extra support. And I've had some teachers that are just like, I don't know why you're here. Um, and I'm like, I'm just here to support the child. You know, parents felt like they needed a tutor. And there's some people that feels a little like, I don't know why there's tutors in the world. So sometimes I always want to think like, where is, where do I fit sometimes in the world of education now that I'm not in it, but a lot of yes. people think that um, all tutors or most tutors don't have to have a certification, which is true. You don't have to be certified to be a tutor. Um, anybody can, but when you know that you have a certified teacher that is a tutor, I would hope a lot of people would be like, yes, like you have an idea what the next step would be. You can advance my kid. You can show them like different ways of doing, like getting the same answer, maybe ways that my child really understands. But sometimes that's hard because you don't know if you get that teacher that's like, I want you to do it this way. This is the only way. And this is my way. And you're like, okay, as long as I know this is your teacher's way and that's the only way they're going to accept, I will help you to break down that concept. But um, sometimes, like you get, as you said, getting thrown into situations. Sometimes I feel like there was a messy situation between the three of them and I'm thrown in and you're like, okay, I don't like this, but we're going to have to figure something out because I'm not going anywhere until this child is perfectly fine. <laughs> so, right, exactly. It's all about the kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. whatever issues you guys have, that's you. <laughs> Right. And so I think, so the advice I think then for parents, right, is try to find someone that you can work with, you know, who's, yes. who's willing to say like, okay, I get it. That's a messy situation. And it might not be whatever we're saying is on going on on the surface. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm willing to work with you and see if I can dig in and figure it out. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So anything. Too, another thing is sort of, um, which we were talking about earlier was sort of having a tutor who has a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Yes. You know? So you want to talk a little bit about that, because I think that is something that lots of parents actually don't know about, I think, at least in terms of math. Yes, because it kind of sparked with one of my lovely little, <laughs> my little podcast or stream that I made, which was um, entitled Why We Suck in Algebra. And it all started with, I was tutoring this young lady, perfectly fine. Everything was moving and grooving. And all of a sudden she's out of nowhere. Why do we suck at algebra? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you're, do you're doing great. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, no, no, no. Like, if you weren't here, I would be horrible. I would completely suck at algebra. And I'm like, no, you'll take a step by step. She's like, but why do people struggle with it? And I'm like, you know, I got to think about that one. And I used to walk early in the morning and all of a sudden it just hit me. I was like, because 
the way that we do, let's say, for example, multiplication. If I said like three times five right now, what's the first thing your, your child is going to think of? Or even you as like an adult, what would you think? You would see three X five because X means multiplication. But once you get into the world of algebra, that X doesn't mean multiplication. That's part of our what's called a variable, an unknown number. So when an algebra teacher reads it, they read it as three X meaning a variable five. And we're all like, what are you talking about? Are you talking about 15 X? And they're like, no, I'm talking about. So it's a whole mindset shift that we're not even asking kids to make. It just seems like after they do arithmetic, they go into pre-algebra, boom, you're supposed to automatically shift. And it doesn't happen that way. Like I always mention, like, okay, I want to lose weight. Yeah, I can walk five miles a day, but if I'm gonna have like a Twinkie and a Coke and like a whole pizza, like, dude, I'm not losing any weight. <laughs> like, you can walk all those miles all you want. That's what I've been doing this whole time. Right? <laughs> it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> But it's like you needed someone to change that mindset for you to want to lose weight. Because for anyone that's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go on the diet because it's January 1st. No. Do you feel like you're ready to go on to a life change? Because that's what you're doing. Okay. You're basically changing your life. You're changing your eating habits. You're changing how you're exercising. You're changing how you're active. Your mindset is different. The same thing is happening for the kids. They need time to see multiple representation of, let's say, multiplication and division. Even the division sign, when everyone sees like the colon with the line through it, the two dots are representing your numerator and denominator. I don't think a lot of people knew that. They think it's like two separate entities. I'm like, no, your division is always going to be in fraction form. So the two dots is representing, okay, what numbers do you want to put inside these dots, like to, in place of the dots? That's basically mm. what it is. And they're like, oh, so when you carry those things over, that's why a lot of the teachers are like, what is this child doing? Because we haven't given them a chance to change that mindset to absorb what is algebra. So I feel like we need a little more if I can say like multiple representation when they're younger. So when they go into algebra, it's not going to be completely foreign. And then all of a sudden the kids are like, this is too much. I quit. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then it's frustrating. And then all of a sudden you're frustrated. Then the teacher's frustrated. Everyone's frustrated. And then you're like, let me get a tutor in here to calm my frustration down. And then we're like, oh, that's what's happening. Right. When you see an X, there's X doesn't mean multiplication anymore. It and doesn't. that is something that took me by surprise so much. I think when, when I started teaching, because I, I teach at a community college and it, it really surprised me that there are students who, who go into college and they don't know that the dot means multiplication, yep. you know, and, and that the X is used as a variable and they're just sort of like, well, why do you have that X next to the plus sign? You know, because you can't are you multiplying adding? Like, is it like, you know, two right. operations or something? It's confusing. And I was just, oh, it's just a little bit of anxiety that like you made it through all of high school right. without, without exactly. actually making that connection. That it's, it's just a difference in notation, you exactly. know? And so definitely knowing to, to go back and, and review that because it can um, get glossed over. Teachers, teachers just assume, you know, until I had that realization that like, okay, we really need to take a day and just talk about how we represent these these different operations um it's such a point of confusion it is and because it's in your books i mean if i wanted to pull out a worksheet right now that deals with um solving one step equations i will still see x being yeah. represented for multiplication oh, and you're okay. like i can't use this worksheet <laughs> and the kid's like why this is the same worksheet i'm like nope can't use it because and then i explain to them and they're like I never knew that. And I'm like, okay. But it, it is a transition. It, it's like there's going to have to be a change in mindset. And it's going to have to happen before they get to algebra. Right. Um, they're right. trying to do other things, which is great. You know, the Singapore math, they're trying to do um, 
oh, what is it called? When they do their long multiplication, they're using the boxes. I think it's like, I forgot, break down. Everyone has a certain lingo with it. Right, right. Which is like what you're going to need, especially if you're doing multiplying binomials or trinomials or polynomials. So you're going to see that concept again. So I know a lot of parents are probably like, there's more of that later. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, and with math, it constantly spirals back. And that's the one thing, like, you're never one and done with math. It's not like, okay, oh, so glad we're done with fractions. Let's move on with life. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, we're bringing these fraction things back again. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> never again, goes away. And again, and again. And again. And again. And again. <laughs> Don't ignore those fractions. Yes. <laughs> right. Slope. Why? Why? Slope. Oh, okay. We're done with slope. Nope. Mm -mm. No, it nope. just keeps going, but we're just going to change certain dialect. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's the main thing. Yeah. And then another thing that I think comes up a lot with both teachers and tutors is that, you know, the tutors with a, a fixed mindset in the sense that like they say, you know, okay, some people are naturally good at math and some people aren't, you know? And so you might have a tutor who, who knows the math very well, but if they don't believe that your child is capable of learning it, if they've are, have automatically put them in that bucket of like, oh, you're not good at math, then that can be really counterproductive for your child, even if the tutor itself is really good at math. Right. You know, so I think, and I think that that can be a problem sometimes with math teachers, right? There's a, yes. there's a lot of discussion now about, you know, fixed mindset and growth mindset and the fact that, you know, math is just a skill. Anybody can learn it. I think, you know, my book, Crush Math Now, that's so much of what I talk about, right? Is just, you know, the fact that we, we want to, approach math the way that we would, you know, soccer, for example, right? Mm -hmm. You know, with soccer, you're not going to like go and do all of these fancy moves and passes and stuff unless you know the basics, right? Right. You, know, you have to learn how to, to kick a ball first. And, and how do you do that? You practice it, right? And you don't learn right. one, from practicing it one day. You have to do it over and over. And so that's sort of the, the growth mindset for mathematics is the same way. And, and it's weird because we, we understand it in so many different areas, right? Like we get that when we're, we're learning to read or learning a new language or learning a sport, but so often, you know, parents and teachers and some tutors actually forget that when it comes to math, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I think that's, that's also a really important thing, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> when you, especially, I feel like kids nowadays feel like they have to be perfect. And they don't have to. You're oh, going to make don't. mistakes. Yes. That's why we always say use a pencil. Like we don't say it to be like all aggressive. We want to use a pencil because it has an eraser. So if you make a mistake, <laughs> you don't have that whole, let me just scratch it out. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, what's going on with this notebook? But when you're using a pencil, you can erase your mistake and then rewrite. That's why we all say use a pencil. But when it comes to a lot of kids think they have to be perfect the very first time. And even when I'm in the classroom or tutoring, I always say the same. How many times have you seen this content? And they'll say, well, this is my first day of doing it. Exactly. You're going to make mistakes, which is fine. And you're going to grow from it. So I know from today, when I look at tomorrow and I ask you certain things, you're going to learn something more because you saw it for more than one day. And that's why sometimes it's harder because the pace in the schools are so quick. And I feel like now that even we're online, the pace is even quicker. Because I, I, I'll see a kid once a week and all of a sudden one week we're working on this, next week they're working on something completely different, not even on the spectrum of like, okay, this will be the next step. All of a sudden I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So did you do this? They're like, no. How about this? No. Factoring this? No. But we're, we're automatically going to exponent. Okay. All right. Um, let's start here. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're breaking stuff down. But it, it just seems like, yes, you know the content, but like you have to know who you're teaching. And I know in the classrooms, it's hard because you have like 30 to 40 different personalities, different levels of kids. But when it comes to tutors, it's just going to be one-to-one, -one. or even if you have some tutors that do small groups, um, hopefully they're not doing anything larger than four kids. That's one suggestion that I would like to give to parents. If they say small groups, 
it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be 20 kids. If it's 20 kids, I wouldn't do that. Your kids is just going to get lost in the sauce. It's just another class at that point. It's just another class. But if uh, someone's saying that they're going to do small groups and they say like four, that's manageable because then they can probably put the kids in breakout rooms or they can just say, all right, I want you to do you two pair up, you two pair up and then, OK, come back. So there's a lot more interaction mm -hmm. um, instead of the one to one. But anything more than four. I would back off on. So if you are looking and some people say, yeah, you can get a cheaper rate for doing small groups, look for something, ask them, what is small groups? So that's just like my little suggestion for people. Yeah, no, that's a really good idea. Cause I think there, there are, couldn't be some benefits to small group tutoring if it's done right. What? You know, yes, like yeah. I really like what you said about, you know, if they put them into breakout rooms and have them talk to each other, the benefit of that you know, is that they get to explain to each other, right? And gosh, you learn a lot when you're trying to be the teacher. You yes. Know? Um, which actually is probably a, another thing to think about, you know, when looking for a tutor and finding a tutor that's right for your kid is, of course, you want someone who can explain things well and in different ways, right, mm -hmm. to help your child find, you know, their way to understand something, but also a tutor who asks your kid to explain stuff, exactly. right? Because, you know, and before I, I taught, I did have a, a tutoring, a small tutoring company, and I hired a few local students to tutor. And that was something that um, I, I underestimated. I think I just had assumed, you know, when I first hired tutors, that all tutors knew. They knew you have to have the child explain stuff to you in order to, you know, make sure that they know it or in order to see where they're making those mistakes, right? And right. it really, it was one of those things where like, I forgot to include it in the very first training the first time around mm -hmm. um, for those tutors. And then they went and they just, they did all the talking and never asked the kids anyways. So again, just some something to look at when we're looking for the perfect tutor for our kids. Right. There are <laughs> lots of little things like that, you know, that, that gosh, do, do make a difference, right? Because you, the kids learn so much when, when they're explaining stuff yes as well you know yeah and then plus for them to annotate on the mm -hmm. screens and yeah. you know just like because it's possible to get your kids some tutoring online because that was one thing a lot of parents weren't sure of mm -hmm. um like can kids learn online like can they really learn online i'm like yes you know they can annotate they can explain um they can basically ask questions and it's like, you'll be amazed at how much can be covered in one hour or even oh, yeah. 45 minutes. You'll be oh, yeah. just astonished. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It totally is. Awesome. Well, gosh, I think we are about out of time. So before oh, wow. we go, I know it flew like so fast. <laughs> I know. I love talking about math tutoring. Honestly, we could talk for another half hour easily. Um, let's see. So before we go, um, can you? Tell people where to find you in case they're interested in having you tutor their kids in algebra. Um, you know, what's what has, what's the best place to get in touch with you and find out more? Well, you can go to my website, acgmathtutoring.com, or you can go to my solo account, which is similar to LinkedIn. So it's S-O-L-O -O dot T-O slash Audrey Codner Gibson. And that will give you like all my information, my phone number, my web address, everything uh, with under the sun and even has some of my athletic stuff in there. So if you're like, what, who is this woman? So you can research me through my solo account. But if you would like to come for like a free meet and greet, we can do it through acgmathtutoring.com. That's right. Perfect. Oh gosh. And then we forgot to talk about your work with athletes. Actually, yes. you do amazing work with athletes. Yes. And you actually uh, do a lot of math tutoring with athletes as well. With right? athletes. Yes. Because I know a lot of them have special schedules and sometimes they just can't do it within that three to five o'clock. So there are some sessions that I do have later on in the evenings. So you just have to like, let me know. Just tell mm -hmm. me that you have an athlete or you need a special schedule. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for, for being here today. This was lots of fun talking about, talking about math tutoring. So yes. such, such a rewarding career, you know, as a, as a tutor, um, and, and something that can just be so helpful, um, you know, to, to math students when, when they find that right tutor, when they find that perfect tutor for them. So it yes. can be a game changer. Totally.
Yes. Well, thank you again for having me. I greatly appreciate this. Yeah, this was so much fun. And if you're listening today, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next interview. Bye.